Welcome back to Nuts and Bolts Torqued. Between the last episode and this one, it's been quite a while. My girlfriend visited me for the winter break and we played this world for quite a bit and did a lot of things, probably spent many dozens of hours in it. And so uh, quite a bit has changed. I mean, the basic layout of it is still the same as you can probably see, but there has been a lot of changes. So unfortunately there's going to be a lot of a disconnect between the last episode and this one, which I don't really like doing, but I'm going to deal with it as best I can. So. I think I'm going to try to avoid kind of just dumping tons of information on you, so I'm not going to go over everything that's changed and has been constructed, but I do want to show off some of the cool changes before getting into some new stuff that I'm going to be doing for this episode. Which, just to tease you for the new stuff, the new stuff is going to be trying to go to another planet. I don't know if we're actually going to get to another planet, but at least I'm going to try to build a rocket. All right, so here's some of what's changed. This is basically the same. Uh, this has changed completely. So Anni, my girlfriend, uh, redid the kitchen completely. So this one's bigger, it's prettier. It's got this really cool, uh, like sacred oak wood look all around it. It's really cool looking. It's been reorganized, it looks a lot prettier. <laughs> There's even a cow in a jar, which is part of the Cooking for Blockheads mod. It allows you to literally capture a cow in a jar and it just slowly generates milk. Pretty cool. Um, and she has made for me lots and lots of food, including tons of plowman's lunches, which if you look at the nutrients down there, they have a little bit of literally every single nutrient, dairy, fruit, grain, protein, and vegetable. So these normally be 100% something happened that kind of reset them down for me. But if I keep eating a plowman's lunch, these are all going to get to 100% and my toughness is going to be super high and I'm going to be super strong and it's just really, really nice food. Pretty amazing stuff. It even says down there 23 times saturation. So this thing basically just gives you like max food just by eating one. It's amazing. So that's changed. Um, oh yeah, we have the gay house here. It's gay and wonderful and happy. Got Ruby and Sapphire together from Steven Universe. Parrot on Amethyst together from Steven Universe. Nice rainbow of lights. And they also made this one. Little jukebox. Oh, there's a CD in it. If I remember right, this CD makes horrible noises, doesn't it? Oh, maybe not. It's not the CD I thought it was. Just throw that back in the system. So we've got that. Um, oh yes, so I've done a bunch of cleanup here. So this used to be kind of the... It was sort of a mix between IC2 machines and also just random machines. There's some forestry machines here and some other things, and uh, I cleaned it up, so now it is only IC2 machines that are here. And... I can't remember if I had made this change during the last episode you saw, or if this changed in the interim, but I completely replaced all of the industrial wire cables. Or the industrial wires, wires, I guess. All of these. Yeah, the the immersive engineering style connections for IC2. I replaced all of those with these just huge gold cables because the wires were having problems. They, the mod seems to be quite buggy, so it seems to be a lot more stable. Pretty ugly. <laughs> just these absolutely massive connections. They get even bigger, too. These are two times insulated gold cables. Look at this three times insulated HV cable. It's almost like a block big. It's ridiculous. And we just ignore all that stuff for now. So this is all IC2 machines. All these pipes have been replaced with Ender IO ones instead of the old extra utilities. Oh, I also made them all a lot faster. So I made tons of overclocker upgrades for everything. So everything's got anywhere between like, I don't know, six, 11. Well, this one has none. Seven. So tons of overclocker upgrades. That makes these extremely fast. Decreased process time to 11%. Increased power consumption, 1,677%. Yeah, they draw a lot of power, but much more bearable. So I moved most of those random machines over to here, this little stairway I dug out here and another little platform with a bunch of random machines. So here's the old forestry machines just here in case I need them thermionic fabricator. Some extra utility stuff, the item repair. I don't remember if I actually made this on camera. Did I? I don't know. 
But yeah, this is the item repair. Repairs items with power. Uh, painting machine from Ender.io. The metal alloy from Rock Hounding. Which I use occasionally to make things like necromingots. I'll take this, thanks. And I also built, I think, a pretty damn clever system here for getting the Actually Editions Empower automated. So if you remember, we already have an Empower that's automated over here down in the, the canola oil generation place. And getting it automated when you have just only one specific thing that you want to empower is a little bit tricky, but not too hard. The main thing is that you want to make sure that you only right-click it to grab the item once it's empowered. Using something like a mechanical user, you only want to do that once it's actually empowered. Otherwise, you'll just take the item out before it's been empowered. And the whole thing just doesn't work. As you can see it doing right now. And the way we did that is with an inventory checker. It checked to see whether the empowered item was there and only activated this mechanical user. Oops. Only activated the mechanical user when that specific empowered item was there. But it gets a lot harder when you want to automate it without having just one specific thing that you can just check for. Because you can check for the presence of anything with an inventory checker, but there's all sorts of different things you can empower. I mean, let's take a look. Uh, power. So yeah, there's Empowered Restonia, Palace, Diamantine Void. There's all sorts of different things to empower. I think basically these are the block forms. You could just... I guess only check for these black block forms and all these individual ones can be turned into the blocks. But still, one, two, three, four, five, six. You got six different blocks. I I don't know if you could even have an inventory checker to do that. You could put one on each side. I don't know what you'd do for the remaining two. Because you can only fit four at the cardinal directions. So I don't know if you could even solve that with an inventory checker. So I went a different pathway. Uh, I decided to try out using redstone comparators on all these different things. The redstone comparators, if you remember, they output a redstone signal based on certain conditions, depending on whatever the mod authors decided to have output. Uh, I tested it out with the display stands and the empower in the center to see what sort of redstone signal we could get. And you can get some useful stuff, but not as useful as I had hoped for. I was hoping it would output a specific redstone signal for when the empower is done empowering, but it doesn't. It seems like the redstone comparator only outputs a is item present from both the display stands and the empower so it'll output a redstone signal if there's an item in a display stand or in the empower but that's it it's either on or off it doesn't tell you whether it's empowered or not or anything like that so to try to make this work with kind of anything in a sort of generic way uh, what i did is i put a comparator on each display stand as you can see and so if any display stand has an item on it it'll output a redstone signal which they all loop around and all end up going here to this mechanical user. And this is set to turn on when redstone is off. So what that means is that if there's an item on any one of these display stands, this mechanical user will not be active. So how it works, and it doesn't it's not perfect, but it generally works pretty well, is I have a separate chest here for each thing. So each one of these corners corresponds to each one of these display stands, and the center one corresponds to what you want to put in the center to empower. Got some palace crystal blocks here. So you fill all these up, and once the items get put in the display stands, any one of the display stands has an item, it turns off the mechanical user. So that works perfectly fine. The mechanical user turns off because the display stands have these things in them. And the center gets the whatever you put in here, and it starts empowering. So that works fine. And then what happens is, once it's done empowering, the items from these display stands disappear. Since they get consumed in the process of empowering, this redstone turns off, which enables a mechanical user and takes the item from the empower. And then, using the controller from Xnet I have here, it extracts the stuff from all these things and puts them back in the display stand and in the center which turns on the redstone now that the display stands are occupied turning off the mechanical user and allowing this thing to be empowered rather than taking it before it's been empowered it works pretty well there's some pretty obvious potential issues which is that what if the mechanical user takes the item in the center before the redstone signal gets to it to turn it off 
Um, but it hasn't been an issue so far. I think because I have no speed upgrades in the mechanical user, it doesn't actually click very often. So it seems like the system has time to kind of shut it off before it tries to use the center block and accidentally take it away. So it seems to be, weirdly enough, the mechanical, mechanical user seems to be slow enough that the whole system actually works pretty well. So yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy about that. If you do have like an odd number of items though, you know, like we got one shard here, one shard here, one here, three here, ten here. If you have an odd number of items, it can, at some point, when it runs out of one of the items, it might just completely stop and get kind of weird and you might have to like reset the whole thing. Which I think is what's happened here. Like if I take this, I think it'll just, yeah, just start working again, but it's going to run out because I've only got like one of each, so pretty soon here it's going to just stop. But it puts the end results over here. And it does take quite a long time to empower stuff. So it's definitely worth automating. Uh, specifically, I automated this to make the greenhouse glass from Actually Additions, which speeds up the growth of any crop beneath it. So each three greenhouse glasses takes one empowered palace crystal block. Is something about my system broken? Why didn't it take that? I don't know. It was working before. <laughs> I assume it will still continue to work when I need it. Not sure. Wait, shouldn't that result... Oh, right, I didn't take it. So each one of these equals three greenhouse glasses, which, as you can imagine, seeing how long that took, probably like... 20... 10, 20 seconds, maybe, for one empowered block. You really want to automate it, or it's going to take forever. You don't want to just have to wait here and just stare at these laser beams. So pretty proud of that. Pretty nice little system, not foolproof or anything, but it's decent. Ah, oh Christ, so much has changed. It's hard to even know what I haven't shown and what I have shown. Okay, I'm pretty sure I didn't show this, so I used to have a couple bloomeries over there, right? So I replaced those with just a massive, massive bloomery system. If you want to process some ore, you throw it in here, it automatically gets round robin, kind of pretty evenly split up between all these different bloomeries, and they all extract to here. Oh, there's some iron in here. Didn't even know that. Also, you may notice I got rid of the sort of dumping thing here, where you just dump out the mining bag into a system here, and then it would go on a bunch of conveyor belts all the way over here and get split up. I got rid of that because uh, I was having some performance issues, and I figured... I know the animated textures of conveyor belts. I think animated textures in Minecraft tend to be a bit laggy and having conveyor belts all over the place. Uh, even though when I first made it, I was, I was like, you know what, if it lags a bit, it's fine. Now I'm kind of more like lag conservation mode. Must conserve all lag. Anything that moves or looks cool must be destroyed to prevent lag. Okay, not quite that extreme, but I did get rid of most of the conveyors, including the one over there that transferred the bones over to the farm. So that's all gone. This is mostly gone. It's been replaced with just a single relatively small conveyor belt system here. Um, so we used to have one crusher... I think there's one crusher here and then there's one crusher down there. Instead I unified it to have just four crushers that kind of just run in parallel here. So there's a little walkway. Go up here, you have four crushers. Um, anything you put inside of this chest will be extracted up to the conveyor belt here. They'll pop up here and through this very confusing mess of splitters and conveyor belts, they'll end up being split into four separate sections and evenly go to each different crusher. And each one then outputs to this chest, which ends up getting extracted to this chest. So put stuff in here and eventually you get the results here. Speaking of, here's a bunch of coal dust. I'll take that. Oh, and some very sad news. Unfortunately, Growlithe... Well, RIP Growlithe. We miss you. Dog bless. Oh, I love that sign. Omni made it, my girlfriend. Uh, yeah, so Growlithe died, unfortunately. Arcanine is perfectly fine. Actually, Arcanine is very slightly hurt. Do I have a healing potion? I do. There you go, buddy. Yeah. So Arcanine is fine, but unfortunately Growlithe died in a terrible accident. Uh, the way dog AI works is, if they're near you, even if they're sitting down like this, if they're near you and you get attacked by an enemy, they will rush to your defense. 
which is really sweet. They're, they're very protective, but unfortunately, it was against a very strong zombie, I think, that I was fighting. And it was attacking me, but I wasn't really particularly attacking it, so... When Growlithe attacked it once, it basically got the aggro of the zombie, and then because it was so powerful, it very quickly died before I could kill the zombie. Ah... Uh, makes me sad just to think about. Yeah, we did try to prevent monster spawns around here using the Mega Torch. So, Torchmaster... Yeah, so Torchmaster has a couple things. Probably the most important one being the Mega Torch. So what this is supposed to do is prevent monster spawns in a very wide radius. I think by default it was configured to prevent monster spawns in a 32 block radius. I changed the config to be 64 blocks because it didn't seem to be working. And strangely enough, it still doesn't seem to be working. We have a bunch of these places all over the place and still mobs seem to spawn extremely close. So I don't know if they're bugged or if it perhaps doesn't work. Like, I know its radius is 32 or 64 now that I've changed it, but I don't know if it works vertically very well. Like, does it also go 64 vertically? Because we have all these trees here, and mobs can very easily spawn on top of the trees up there. And I wonder if that might be what's happening, perhaps? I'm not sure. But either way, they really do not work very well at all. So, Mega Torches are unfortunately a bust. I even updated the mod to the newest version, too. Still no luck. Okay, I think I'll go over one more kind of large thing before getting into the new stuff. So one other thing that's changed is the farm system over here a bit. So, I used to have a bunch of Batania Ecrocarnations here to speed up the growth of the trees, but for reasons that I'll get into later, not in this episode, uh, in a future one when I talk about what's changed with Batania, um, I ended up getting rid of all those Ecrocarnations, which ended up making the trees grow extremely slowly. So, in trying to speed them up, this is when I made all this greenhouse glass from actually additions, which is why I set up that empower over there. And these speed up the growth of the trees significantly. You can see there's pretty much never a point where there isn't a grown tree. It's not super fast, but it's definitely decently fast. Although, still not fast enough, for reasons that I'll get into also in a future episode. So yeah, that's changed a little bit. I also replaced all of the kind of mana manual mechanical user um, Pam's Harvestcraft farm over here, and I replaced each individual crop with its own garden cloche. So each individual thing, raspberry seed, blackberry, every single Pam's Harvestcraft crop, as well as the vanilla ones, like like just wheat and pumpkins and stuff like that, and and even sugarcane actually grows in these as well. It's really cool the way it works. It's especially cool to watch the melons. They start so tiny and they get so big. Look at them. And then, boop. <laughs> Pretty cute. So each individual crop has its own garden cloche, which, because these garden cloches are honestly totally overpowered, it just pumps out so much stuff. I am never going to run out of any food here, ever. And I've even got a bunch of empty ones that I could fill up if I needed to. But I put in literally every single Pam's Harvest Craft food item that was available, plus the vanilla ones, so I don't see me needing much more room, if any, ever. Okay, so I've also made a bunch of changes with Batania down in the water base and also with Astral Sorcery, but I'll get into that probably in the next episode. Let's start on the new stuff, so... This is the platform I've laid out for Advanced Rocketry, which is the mod we're going to use to try to get to... I think it's the moon, is probably where we're going. I think that's the first planet we'll be going to. So I built out this platform out of a bunch of factory blocks from Chisel. Um, I made sure not to do any real work in Advanced Rocketry, because I wanted to save that all for when I was actually recording with the series. So all I've done is just laid out some of the machines, including the crystallizer that used to be way over there, if you remember. We used this to make the... Um, what was it exactly? Lithium? Yeah, the Dilithium Crystal. So we used this to make the Dilithium Crystals to make... I think it was basic capacitors, yes. Oh, and also the Empower. But yeah, the basic capacitor is super important. That's used in tons of Ender IO stuff. So getting a steady supply of dilithium is pretty important. And the easiest way to get it is from 
dilithium ore, which I believe is on the moon, or whatever the first planet is they were going to be going to with advanced rocketry. Pretty sure it's the moon. Don't see what else it would be. <laughs> I don't think our first outing is going to be to Mars or something. So that's kind of the main reason I want to get to space. So this is a crystallizer machine you've seen before. I also made some other ones. Cutting machine and... Uh, just this. The lathe and... Precision assembler. I don't know if this is all the machines we're going to need, but I think it's most of them. So I've just got these laid out. I've got this platform here. I've also been playing around with these inverted Ender IO lights. They're pretty cool. They're actually surprisingly kind of expensive to make. Uh, you need a bunch of glass, iron, and glowstone just to make one. Just to make a single light. So a little bit pricey, but I like them just because they are they fit kind of the theme of an industrial place more than just torches or... Oh, I don't have my illumination wand on me, do I? No, I don't. But those are kind of magical looking sources of light. And this one is a lot more industrial looking. What the? <laughs> Get out of here. Freaking guardians. Yeah, you better swim. So they look more industrial, and they're also really low profile. They don't stick up like other light sources tend to. So I like how they look. Oh, yeah, and over here we have the actual launch pad. We've got a rocket assembling machine. This is the thing that turns your multi-block rocket structure into an actual rocket that will move. And a fueling station. I don't know how to even make fuel yet. But when we figure it out, we can fuel it. So, let me look into what exactly I need to build a rocket. I'm really not sure. Alright, so I was looking at the wiki, and it looks like one of the things we need to make for fuel, and I think also maybe for s the spacesuit that you're going to need, is the electrolyzer. And I was just looking at that, and we had everything to make it except the basic circuit, which required using the cutting machine. Again, I haven't used any of these machines here at all except the crystallizer for the dilithium crystals. I wanted to make sure I did all that on camera. So, electrolyzer, we need to cut up a basic circuit plate, which requires us to put these things in a precision assembler. To get a silicon wafer, we need silicon buell in a cutting machine. And to make silicon buell, we need silicon ingot and silicon nugget in the crystallizer. So, let's just start there. I'm gonna make a ton of that, because it looks like we're gonna need it. Oh, right, goes in the input hatch. There we go, looks like it's doing something. I wonder if I can make it faster. I think it'll get faster if I replace these copper coils with a different type of coil. So yeah, let's start replacing the coils. I'm just gonna take these out, let that finish. Take all that out. It's not that it's super slow, but I'd like it to be faster. So the current speed is 3.81. So if I replace these... Oop. Oh yeah, I, so I upgraded my cobalt pickaxe. I gave it the highest speed possible. Hastistist, as it says there in red. It is so fast that sometimes I accidentally break more things than I wanted to. As you saw there. Oh, just gotta be careful. Where is it? Did I get it back? Oh yeah, I should also mention, I empowered my dark helmet to have night vision, so I can actually turn on night vision whenever I want. It's super, super helpful. It's ridiculously helpful. Unfortunately, it does make anything that's really dark like this. It turns it to this, like, ugly yellow. But still super nice. Where's my fact? Oh, there's my factory block. Alright, so let's try these titanium ones. It was at 3.81, right? Now, oh, now it's at 6.78. Okay, that's a lot faster. So it should be like double the speed? Yeah, nice. Okay. So we need to just throw those in the cutting machine, right? I think. Ooh. Yeah, look at that. Some really cool animations with these machines. And I believe this one has good stuff, too. Yeah, so I updated the version of Advanced Rocketry, by the way. And also Lib Vulpus. 
which is like a library that it seems to rely upon for a lot of things. Because the version that came with this mod pack seemed incredibly ancient. And there have been so many version changes that it looked like they had some really nice changes, so I just updated it. And one of the things that I think is new is the idea of these... Whoop. No, it cuts me. Is the idea of these motors. So there are these coils which change the speed. Gold coil, copper, titanium, aluminum, iridium. Uh, but there's also these motors. I don't know if they're like the same thing. Because they have a machine speed as well. See, there's motor, advanced motor, enhanced motor, elite motor. So I don't, I'm not sure what's up with that. I don't know if that's new or maybe that was always there and I just never built a machine that needed motors before. But some of these seem to use motors to determine how fast the machine is and others like this use coils. Oh, whoa. That made a lot. Does each one make four? Oh yeah, each one makes four. Alright, so then we use that for what? Precision Assembler. Biome Changer. Huh. Okay, so I'm going to throw these in Precision Assembler. A stack of that in redstone and gold. I've already got those on me. Output hatch. Where's my input hatch? There it is. Um, oh, is it not on? No, it's it's on. Oh, whoa. Just needed a kickstart, I guess. <laughs> I think normally this takes longer. When I've seen people use this machine, uh, usually like actually see the whole animation as it goes. This is just like super speed. It, it's 28.44 times speed. Not sure why it's that fast. I did use elite motors in it, but I didn't think it'd be that fast. But anyway, it's making them pretty fast. All right, well. With that... Oh wait, we're not done yet. We need to throw that back in here to get the chips, right? Yes. That gives four chips each. It does. Okay, so that should be enough to make the electrolyzer. Alright, so I've made the electrolyzer, and I also made the chemical reactor, which according to the wiki we are also going to need. Also made a bunch of input hatches, output hatches, and all sorts of stuff that I think we're going to need to make these multi-block structures. So let's use the hollow projector to place these down. So I think it said we're going to have to supply the electrolyzer with water and then feed the end result into the chemical reactor. So we want these to be near each other. I'll put the electrolyzer here. So, electrolyzer. Oop. Electrolyzer, there we go. Let's see. Let's see if I remember how to do this. Show me the whole thing. That's the whole thing. Let's move it back a bit. Oop. There we go, one from the edge. Let's move it to the right as well. There, one from the corners. All right, so we got the electrolyzer in the center. We got two fluid output hatches on the front, a single fluid input hatch on the back. These machine structures are just kind of like generic blocks, kind of filler material. Then it needs two power plugs, and in the center, a coil. So I'm gonna use a titanium coil, it's the best tier coil, I think. And there we go. Yeah, it's really cool looking. Wow, so the speed only goes up to basically two times. I guess because you can only control it with the one coil. That's all you can speed it up. So it's got two outputs. Yeah, I think it's going to... Well, it's an electrolyzer, so it's going to output oxygen and hydrogen. So that must be these two fluids. Although, I mean, they're not really actually fluids. They're gases, right? <laughs> but, oh well, I guess they treat them as fluids. It's also going to need power. I don't, need, I don't know if I need to supply it with power on both ends. I don't see why I would. But, I don't know. I guess I will just, just do it. Here we go. Can't hurt. Alright, thing's full of power. So now I need to supply it with water. So I'm going to use something new that I found to supply this thing with water. 
I think I updated Ender.io, so this may not have been in the original mod pack. I, I updated so many mods between the last recording and this one. Um, but Ender.io has a reservoir. I don't know why I'm looking it up. I have it in my inventory. So it has something called a reservoir, and as it says, when connected with other reservoirs, add two buckets of water for an infinite water source. Produces one bucket per second. So it's sort of like... It seems to behave sort of like vanilla, where if you make a strip of three buckets of water, the middle bucket will infinitely regenerate. It seems to behave sort of like that. Um, hmm, I don't actually... You know what? I don't think I actually need a pipe. I was going to put a pipe between this infinite water source and this fluid input hatch, but I think I can just put it right here and have it auto-output. So, yeah, it seems to work. You put some water in. And then, there we go. So you put two buckets of water on each side, and then the middle one will infinitely regenerate. So I think I can take out of it. Yeah. Whoop. <laughs> Uh-oh. Abort. There we go. I don't think it auto-outputs at the moment, though. It said hit it with a wrench to get it to auto-output, so where's my... yet a wrench? So, like, this? Uh... Oh. Oh. There we go. That worked. Oh, no. That didn't work. So... Is it outputting now? I don't think it's infinite now. I think I accidentally broke it. No. Oh no, this is terrible. <laughs> well, I'm just gonna hope that continues to work. So do I have to look at the fluid input hatch? Let's see if I can get it to appear here. I'm only getting the coil to show up. Like, I'm, I want to... I think I have to look at the fluid input hatch itself to see exactly how much water it has in it. Well, anyway, it's working. Yep, so there's hydrogen. There's oxygen. In liquid form, somehow. How strange. It's producing equal amounts of hydrogen to oxygen. Even though it's H2O, it should be double hydrogen. Ah, well. Doesn't have to be accurate, does it? Who cares? Okay, there we go. Got it fixed. And it seems like you just right-click it without sneaking, and it makes it auto-output. So that seems to be working now. Alright, so we're going to want to auto-output... Or, I mean, we're going to want to output the oxygen and the hydrogen to the chemical reactor. So let's get the multi-block structure for that going. That's my projector. Chemical reactor. Nope. This is an input. That's power. Output. Oh, the inputs must be on the top. Right, I'm not looking at the top layer. There we go. Fluid input, fluid input. Input. So I guess it takes items too. Huh. Anyway, I think that looks good. I don't think they're too close. Should be the pipe should be able to fit in there pretty easily. Yeah, alright, let's do that. So we've got a motor that goes there. Okay, that should do it. There we go. So there's our chemical reactor. It looks so much cooler on the back than it does the front. Like the, the front's really plain, but it's the back that actually looks nice. What a shame. Because this is the part we're going to stare at most of the time. Alright, this thing's going well. It's almost full. So... We have two inputs, right? Input, input. So I'm sure we probably need both inputs to go in there, right? I'm actually looking over the wiki right now. It says the oxygen and the hydrogen must be pumped from the liquid output hatches on the electrolyzer transport to the liquid input hatches in the chemical reactor. Alright, so let's just hook it up. 
So I'm going to use XNet. Let's throw a controller down. Um, I guess I'll put it like right here. That should be fine, right? Oh man, did you see that? When I mean, the little like spark appeared between these two things, it totally messed up the texture of the garden cloches over there. Like the transparent parts of it turned all weird. Yeah, this should be fine. All right, let's give this thing some power. And let's hook it up to a million different things. So that'll be that one. Have to get rid of this light. Let me put that light back somewhere. <laughs> the XNet connector connected to it. Yes, read the light. There we go. Alright, there's that. Let's connect there. Let's not connect west. Actually, let's connect in the back for both. Just so it looks better, I think. Oh, Christ. This pick is seriously too fast. of all the extraneous connections. There we go. Go repair our sad, sad platform that I keep doing terrible things to. Okay. Set up a channel here for fluids. I'm trying to think if I should separate them out. You know, like, does it only accept one type of fluid in one hatch? It probably isn't particular about what fluid goes in what hatch, which means I should probably separate these out into channels or I might accidentally end up with hydrogen in both hatches or oxygen in both hatches. So I'll do separate channels for this. Oh yeah, these are very nondescript, aren't they? Well, I'll just make sure this one... This output, whichever one it is, doesn't particularly matter. Let's disable this. I think I probably already inserted... Yeah, I already inserted some. No, that's fine. And then I'll make another channel for the next one. We'll extract from this one, and input to this one. Okay. This should do it. Yep, hydrogen's going in there. Oxygen's going in there. Turn it on. I hear a noise. That's good, right? Oh, somehow it's making a noise, but it has no power. Right. That's kind of important, huh? Once again, two power plugs. Ooh, is that... This middle block's in the way if I want to connect both of them to that one, but that's okay. I'll connect them to separate ones. This one over here. And this one over here. There we go. Speed four. So what is it producing exactly? Where's the output hatch? Wait, what is it? <laughs> what is it producing? Oh, these are the output hatches. These are the output hatches? It's weird, there isn't even like a pipe connection there. Strange. Oh, that produces rocket fuel? Straight up from those two things? Just from water to rocket fuel that easily? I thought I'd have to, I don't know, like process plants or something. Okay, cool. Is there another output hatch on the other side? I don't think there is. It's hover. I don't know if I ever... I don't think I used hover mode when I was playing before. Uh, but yeah, I discovered that there is actually a hover mode with these, these uh, backpacks. It's pretty nice. You move forwards and backwards and kind of horizontally very, very slowly, but you are 100% stable. Like, you don't bob up and down at all when you're hovering. Oh, this is just a pure output hatch. Not a fluid output, but item output. Looks like no items come out of it. At least with these ingredients. Okay. 
Well, it's good that I've got that up and running because it seems to produce rocket fuel pretty slowly. I'm not sure how much each rocket can hold, but probably many, many buckets, I would assume. So how fast is it burning through these, huh? Not very fast at all. I'm assuming this can keep up. Oh yeah, this can more than keep up. I could probably run like two or three chemical reactors just off this one electrolyzer. Okay. Uh, let's take a look. So that's... So that's pretty much it for getting the fuel up and going. Although I suppose I should probably be outputting the fuel, right? Because I want to be able to store more than just this much. I think I'm going to try putting the fuel in these stone drums. I've talked before about how I don't like... I generally don't like the drums from Extra Utilities too because they're just kind of ridiculously overpowered and it looks silly to have some of the higher tier ones, which it doesn't say here how much they support, but I'm pretty sure the iron is like 512 buckets full in a single block space. It's kind of absurd how something so tiny holds so much and it just doesn't feel right. But these lower tier stone drums I think are okay. I think they hold maybe like 16 buckets or something. So that doesn't feel overpowered or weird, and it also just feels appropriate to have a drum of rocket fuel for some reason. Don't really know why. But let's put some more connections here. What the? Oh, <laughs> connect to the light again. Connect these up. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so we have the output hatch here. I should probably name these at some point. Because they all look the same, and they're named exactly the same. Let's turn it off. So this is going to be the rocket fuel. You can extract from there and insert into these three. Um, hmm. Let's do a priority system, actually. Instead of distribute... Yeah, so distribute would take whatever rocket fuel's in here and evenly distribute it between these drums, but I think I'd prefer to have one full drum than three not full drums. So I'll put this at like a priority of three, and then two, and then one. All right, so that should put all of it into one first. And it is, and yeah, each one holds 16 buckets, which seems, that seems reasonable for the size. Yep, and then the next one will fill up, and then the next one. Cool. Alright, we got some rocket fuel storage. Nice. Uh, let's see what's next. Looking over at the wiki, it says, Spacesuit construction. In order to be able to survive in space, a protective spacesuit must be worn on any planet without an atmosphere. The recipe for the spacesuit itself... Mm -hmm. So it looks like after I complete making the spacesuit, I have to add oxygen to it using a gas charge pad filled with oxygen. The spacesuit has enough oxygen to last 30 minutes in a vacuum. Okay, so make the spacesuit and then make the gas charge pad. Okay, I've gone ahead and made the gas charge pad. But anyway, it's not a multi-block structure. I also went ahead and made the full spacesuit. Helmet, chest piece, leggings, boots. So let's fill this thing up with oxygen. I went ahead and named these connections so I actually know what's what. So we're extracting hydrogen oxygen. So this channel, extracting oxygen, and we want to export, or insert, rather, into this. That should do it. Yeah, excellent. Okay. Let's put all this on. Oh, achievement. Suited up. So it looks like there's my O2 amount there. Right next to my health. Or my food, rather. This should charge it up. Oh. Oh, I thought I just... I thought it said you just stand on it. You can add oxygen to it, the spacesuit, by standing on a gas charge pad filled with oxygen. But this looks like I'm supposed to put my armor in it. I also wonder if this thing needs RF, because the little tooltip up there says RF, but it doesn't indicate RF anywhere here. So, I'm not really sure. Okay, that's not doing anything. Maybe it does need power. Although, where would I put the power? I mean... 
Like, that's hideous. <laughs> that's really ugly. Alright, well, I'll put that there for testing purposes. No, it doesn't take power. I didn't think so. Okay, I've got a hunch about what's going on. So I was looking more about how spacesuits work and the charge pad and all of that, and it sounds like the spacesuit is very customizable. You see in the top left of the corner, the, the toughness too is kind of partially covering it up, but it shows you an icon for each piece of armor. I think if you had special abilities for each piece of armor, it would then display those. So there's all sorts of like attachments you can add to the different pieces of armor to give you different abilities. And one of the things you can do is add pressure tanks to your chest plate, which normally would allow you to hold extra oxygen, but I'm thinking the wiki mentioned that you can configure basically how much the default storage of oxygen is in a config file. I guess the idea being normally there's like your suit can by default hold a little bit of oxygen without any enhancements, but you can also add additional tanks to hold more oxygen. I'm thinking, because it's an expert pack, maybe they've tweaked the config so that the default storage holds either nothing or whatever this amount is here. A couple bars. So like, maybe it's just already full, and it just doesn't hold much. So I made a couple super high pressure tanks, which I believe I can use to fill with oxygen. Super cheap recipe too, just a couple titanium sheets for each one. And apparently to modify our armor you have to do it in a suit workstation. So let's just plop that down. I don't know. There? Sure. Disconnect it. So is this my own piece of armor? Like, put it here and add attachments and stuff, I think? Yes, yeah, so there's a couple, like, default O2 ones, it looks like. Alright, so let's fill up these tanks. Oh, that was instant. Nice. Is there no more oxygen to put in this thing? Oh, there isn't. Wait. Why not? What's... what's going on? That's weird, it just turned off. Uh... Did it stop again? Okay, and now it's on. And it stopped? Is it because this is full? Oh, yeah, I think it won't auto-void. So it won't run when this liquid oxy uh, liquid hydrogen is full. I think that's what's going on. Well, anyway, there should be plenty, I think. So if we throw that in here, we can probably attach these. And... Yeah, I guess that's good. You can see the tanks appeared in the top left of the screen. The O2 is now blue. I'm not exactly sure how to read that, to be honest. But it's blue, so it looks better than red like it was before. Okay, well, I think our spacesuit's good. So let's look at actually making the rocket ship. So I'm just looking over at the wiki. We need a seat, a guidance computer, a planet ID chip, a rocket engine, a fuel tank, stuff like that. So let me go make some rocket components. Okay, I think I've got all the components to build the rocket. So we need a couple of engines, and from what I understand, it's pretty freeform how you build this. I don't think it actually matters where you place it inside of the launch pad, as long as it is within the bounds of this launch pad, and it just kind of like... I think it just kind of like adds up what each block does, so I guess if you wanted to, you could put like the engines at the corners. And it doesn't care, it just sees two engines and says, Hey, with two engines, you consume this much fuel and you go this fast. That sort of thing. So I'll just try to make something relatively aesthetically pleasing. Uh, well, I guess it's going to be off-center. Oh, well. I'll go two rockets, followed by a couple of fuel thingies. Apparently we need a guidance computer. It didn't say I need a guidance computer access hatch, but that sounded important, so... Ooh, what's this? Hmm? Hmm. Uh, it said that I it said I needed a planet ID chip, which I think controls what planet I'm going to go to. At the moment, it's unprogrammed, and I'm not sure how to program it. Do you, like... 
Like, I'm guessing you program it and then stick it in the guidance computer and that determines where you go, but... But yeah, how do I, how do I program it? Allow ejection of station ships, planet chips upon landing. So I think this is for, like, automating planet ID chips. So this is for, like, automating if you want to send rockets back and forth to different planets. I guess you could, like, automatically extract them. And then place them inside, I'm guessing. Anyway, apparently I need a seat, which just looks like a bit of carpet. Uh, man, this is, um... It's gonna be a dangerous rocket, huh? <laughs> I'm just gonna be on a piece of carpet. Off-center, on a piece of carpet. On a couple engines. That's... Not very safe. Right, well that's everything except the planet ID chip, so... Yeah, what can I use this? Astral body data processor. That's... That's not it. Alright, I need to look this up. Okay, well it says to program them, you just put them inside of the guidance computer and then there'll be like a select destination button. I'm not seeing it, so perhaps I need to build the rocket before I can do that. So, let's see if this thing works. It scans it. Not enough fuel capacity. Two liquid fuel tanks isn't enough. Looks like it's not even close to enough. Alright, let's go build a bigger rocket. Alright, that's a beautiful, beautiful rocket. Well, I should play Kerbal Space Program. Thank God I don't think it matters. I don't think I'm going to burn up just by sitting out in the open. Alright, let's see if that's enough. Missing guidance computer, so let's see. So it feels just a bit above the white line. The white line is kind of like the what you need to be able to do the thing. Accelerations looks like it's just enough. Thrust is super good. But yeah, missing guidance computer. Well, I mean, it has a guidance computer, but I guess it needs a chip in it. Still missing guidance computer? Huh? It's right there, guidance computer. Okay, I found the problem. Yeah, so the guidance computer was not being recognized because it was too far up. It only scans, I guess, sort of within the range of the structure tower. So it wasn't, because the structure tower was relatively short, it wasn't actually going up to the point where it was scanning the guidance computer. So I just made it much, much taller and scanned it and it says, clear for liftoff. Which, I mean, it definitely isn't. I haven't, <laughs> I haven't even given it any fuel, but um, let's go ahead and build it. And then I guess we can probably give it fuel and do all that other stuff after we build it. Alright. Oh, it looks like it centered it. Cool. Okay, so... Oh. Uh-oh. Press space to take off. Well, I have... I should have no fuel, so I hope that wouldn't actually work. So there should be a way to enter, like, the main GUI of the rocket, is what it said, to program the destination. Oh, here we go. Okay, so if you sneak click, sneak right click on it, it gives you sort of the stats rather than trying to enter it. So we can disassemble it or select the destination. Let's select it. Ooh. Cool. Never seen this before. There's Terra. That's where we're at. Um, I'm guessing these are going to get populated when I choose a destination. So... Nope. Oh. Whoops. Planet list. Okay, so it looks like we're going to the moon. Looks like that's the only destination. The moon has no moons of its own. Damn. Ah, well. I guess that moon will have to do. <laughs> so, select. Oh, no, no, no. Put my night vision on. Okay. I don't quite understand. I selected a destination, but I didn't actually put a planet ID chip inside, and it seems like I can't. So do I have to put it inside before I build this thing? Or what? So, like, should I disassemble it? Then 
plop it in. Well, the chip is still inside, so... Okay, I guess that's good, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> I did very briefly look at a video when I was trying to figure out this problem, and I saw them putting the Guidance Computer Access Hatch actually not like on the ship itself, but next to it. So can I do that? Does it show anything? No. Alright, there we are. I'm just gonna assume that's fine. So... We've got this fueling station. Let's fill it up. Let's go grab one of these barrels. Okay. Barrel of fuel. Let's put down a fluid conduit. And extract, always active. Insert. That is full. Is this thing full? No. So how do I get this thing to actually fuel it? I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be next to it like this. Like next to the launch pad. Okay, I think you have to somehow link the fueling station with the rocket to make it output the fuel. And there's something called a linker from Liv Vulpus, so I think this will do it. Program the linker. Linked successfully. Okay. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, yeah, and it's filling up. About half full, so how are we doing on amounts? Okay, so it looks like it holds a little bit less than 16 buckets, I'm guessing. Oh, significantly less than 16 buckets. Yeah, 7 plus 5, 12, so it holds 4 buckets? Is that right? If it holds 4 buckets, then 1, 2, 3, 4... Wait, how many tanks of fuel do I have here? 8? So each one holds half a bucket? Okay, yeah, so each fuel tank holds half a bucket of fuel. Gotcha. Okay, well, with that, I think it's pretty much ready to go. My incredibly dangerous rocket that is going to almost immediately kill me. <laughs> I've got a spacesuit with a bunch of oxygen inside of it. Got a rocket that I think is programmed to go to Luna and is definitely full of fuel. I think I'm going to save actually going to Luna for the next episode. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, we're going to go to the moon. <laughs>